Hey everyone, and welcome back to my next video. Let's dive into how to make a train in the Create mod. So to begin, go ahead and feel free to use the timestamps to go ahead and skip over any part of this video that you would like to. Uh, I'm gonna break it all up, everything from what does each of these items do to how do you just make a train in general. So definitely skip around if you already know a section or if you just don't care about a certain section. But to begin, we're gonna go ahead and cover these first nine items. These are gonna be the nine items that we're gonna use throughout this entire tutorial. So the first one are train tracks, train casings, the train schedule, the train station, the train observer, the train signal, the train controls, and then there's also a train door and train trap door. Those are kind of like aesthetics essentially to the uh, to the build. These are all brand new items that have just released in the newest version of this game. If you want to know more about all the new twists and tweaks that have been all added into this game in the newest version, I have a video popping up at the top right hand corner of the screen, so go ahead and check that out. So to start off with the most basic thing about designing trains is the train track. Now, uh, train tracks kind of speak for themselves, but I want to go over some cool little neat tricks as you're going ahead and building your train tracks. So the very first thing is that as you right click a train track, you can actually bulk place the train track by right clicking again on the train track and then dragging it out. Now, as you can see, if it's green, that means that we are good, it can connect. If we go towards the right, it's too sharp. And you can also see if you're looking towards the ground in this area, you can see the green and red. So if I aim over here, it's too sharp, I can aim anywhere in this area and it's totally fine. This will also allow us to do curved tracks, uh, straight tracks, whatever works for us. There's also another cool addition with holding the sprint key. So if we go ahead and click to put down a track, and then we head into a section where it's gonna kind of curve, almost like an S curve. If we hold down our sprint key, which is default is left control, it will, instead of being super wavy, it will just make it almost a direct path. So you can kind of use that if you want to make your tracks look a little bit more fluid and less jagged. As you can see, you can also place tracks that start to go up and down depending on what you're looking for. But a nice, really cool addition is that you can add a block or even things like these new metal girders into your offhand. And this will allow us to actually place blocks automatically underneath the track as we create it. So we could do that by right clicking on the train track, going to our second position, right clicking, and you'll see it's now placed tr uh, the girder right underneath of every single one of these tracks. Uh, so with the girder, it kind of gives a really cool design, so it's kind of worth noting, but you can try different blocks, different slabs, things like that to kind of add kind of a base to your rails. One really cool addition to the trains is that we have the ability to actually travel to the nether via the train tracks. And also, without those chunks being loaded, the train will still be operational going through portals. So one really cool addition is that if you go ahead and place a train track right against the nether portal, you'll see right there, it actually connects and then we'll actually start to build on the other side. As you can see right here, it's automatically been placed on the other side, so our train would actually be able to drive through the portals. This will be really good for like lava collection and things like that. We can have a train come in here, collect lava, and bring it back to the regular world. Some cool kind of little tips to kind of keep in mind as you design your train networks all through your worlds is that they can travel in unloaded chunks, as I just said. Uh, they'll actually become invisible, and then as soon as a player walks near them, they'll become visible again. And on top of that, they'll even stop at train stations, which I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how to design those in a few minutes. So you can have a fully operational train traveling in chunks that no players are even at if you would really want to. So before I begin actually showing how to build a train completely, I wanna go over an overview of what a train station looks like, and then we'll dive into using all of the new blocks to go ahead and create your own train. So a train station is this new block that you basically place on these rails, and it will allow your trains to actually automatically stop at the station. And you can use other different objects to go ahead and basically set your train to stop at certain stations for a certain amount of seconds and then continue to travel to the next one, just like this. Uh, and as you place it, the only thing you really want to keep in mind is this arrow. That is the direction that the train is going to be driving in. If it's facing the wrong direction, the train won't drive in that direction because it's the wrong side of the track. Another key note is that for train stations, if you attach a redstone comparator to it, as soon as the train actually gets onto that block, it will send out a redstone signal. So you could use that for different lamps and things like that. You can also attach a display link. That's another new block for this update. And the display link will read properties of this train station and you can actually display them onto dis uh, display boards. So as you can see right here, we have something that's counting down the seconds until our next train will be heading to the stop on the right side. It might have seemed a little confusing, but all this is saying is how many seconds is this next train, so this name of this train is called the Blaze Train, will be heading to the next stop. So you can see right now, there's currently a train that's gonna be heading to the right stop next, so this would be the time to hop onto the train. 
You can also set up the display link in another format, and this is for when the train arrives at the station. You'll see it'll actually count down for how long until it's gonna actually depart. So currently it says it's gonna depart in 10 seconds, now five seconds, and as the time goes away, eventually this will vanish and it will actually depart. Both of those you can configure by right-clicking on the display link, and you can either pick the train schedule status, that's this one that's gonna go ahead and count down for once a uh, train has actually gone onto this part of the train track, or you can go ahead and set it to the train station summary, and that is this signage over here that's counting down the seconds until there's a train that's gonna go to this other stop. Quick little pause, I know a lot of that probably just went over a lot of people's heads. Totally fine, feel free to hop in my Discord, ask some questions, I'll help you out, or even ask them in the comments, and I'll also help you out. Probably the best thing you could do is just hop in creative mode and mess with things. Uh, that's basically how I've learned everything for this video. But now for the fun part, we're gonna go over how do you make a train inside of the create mod. So there are some required blocks and some non-required blocks depending on what you're looking for. The biggest thing that you will need is you're gonna need a train casing, you will need a train station, you're gonna need super glue, and you're gonna need train controls. And if you want your train to go in both directions, both forward and backwards, then you would want them uh, two pairs of train controls. If you want it just one direction, you only need one. You'll also need some blocks just to build like a, a seat or anything like that for you to go ahead and stand on. And then if you want to go ahead and automate your train so that it will drive on a schedule and things like that, you'll need to make a train schedule. And you'll need some type of mob or a blaze burner to actually drive your train, which I'll dive a little bit deeper in a few moments. If you wanted those display boards that I showed off, you'll need a display board, you'll need a cogwheel and some type of power source. I'm just going to use the creative motor. And you'll also need a display link to connect the display board to our train stations. There's also these two other blocks. I've just brought deep slate and train trap doors just as a little bit of an aesthetic so you don't have to worry about anything like that. So to get started, we're gonna grab our train station and we're gonna head over to the rails where we want our train station to be. Keep in mind, this is where the train is gonna stop. So let's say we wanna have our train stop right here. We're gonna right click, make sure the arrow is facing in the direction we want our train to go. And then we'll place down our train station. You'll see at the bottom it says it's been bound to the targeted track. And now we're going to right click on the train station. At the top we can click this little icon here to rename our train station. So we'll say uh, YouTube station. And then down below we're going to go ahead and click on the train icon to create a new train. Now what we've done here is that this ground right here is turned to blue. This allows us to start to build bogies. And how you build a bogey is you just grab a train casing and place it on the blue part, and that will turn into a small bogey. This is basically our train wheels that is gonna allow our train to drive. And if you wanna place down more of them, you just gotta place them inside of this blue area over here. It's also worth noting, if you right click on the side of the train, there are two different options depending on what type of carriage you would like your train to be. And our next step is that we have to go ahead and actually build the train itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build some things out of casings by just placing some items around. I'm gonna go ahead and place down some train controls right on to the front. And then I'll go ahead and place a blaze burner behind it. Now, as far as the mob or the blaze burner, you have two different options. You could put down a seat and then actually just have a mob fall into it, like a parrot or something like that. Or you could put down a blaze burner. The only thing is that you need to have train controls right in front of it because they're now the driver of the train. Once you do this, you have two different options. You could either do this without the mob, so just you yourself can drive the train if you would like to, or if you place the mob down, that allows it to be automated and it can drive itself. Once this whole section is built, our next step is we have to glue it to the train car. So the one thing that you're gonna wanna make sure is that there's this gold box, the small bogey that's in the very center. You're gonna wanna make sure that that is connected somehow to every other part of the train. So you can see right here, I've now connected everything to the part of the train. And if we're going ahead and looking, we should see, there we go, that everything is highlighted in green in some way, shape or form. Now, right here, I'm not too sure if everything is connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this train station and I'm gonna click assemble train. You can see right here, it says I need at least one forward facing controls block needs to be mounted on the train. That's this train controls right here. That means that this actually isn't connected. So we're just gonna connect it just like so and we should be good to go. So let's try this again. We'll click assemble train and you know you've completed it because it gives you no errors. There's a red flag and also you cannot select any of these blocks onto this train. If you're using a blaze burner, your blaze will also light up automatically. You won't need a power source for him. 
Inside of your train station, you can also name your train. This is super helpful to name your train stations and your trains when you have multiple trains and train stations all going around. Really easy to name this, but we'll just call it the YouTube train. And last but not least, we have a couple different things we could do. If we wanted to drive our train ourselves, we could always right click on this train controls and we can use S to go forward. We could use, or excuse me, S to go backwards. You could use W to go forwards. Uh, you can also just use space to automatically approach the next station and it will stop right at the next train station. You could also, by using S and W, you can use the scroll wheel to actually accelerate faster or slower. It basically exceeds the maximum or the slowest speed you could be on. And this brings us to our next step. So we're going to go ahead and mess around with a train schedule. This basically allows us to automate our trains to do whatever we would like them to do. One good thing we want to do is if we want to go ahead and make this train go around in a circle, is that we want to make a second train station. Again, be careful of the arrow. Make sure that it's facing in the direction that we want our trains to go in and we'll place down our train station and we'll go ahead and just call this YouTube Station 2. Now, once we've done this, we can go ahead and make our train schedule. So let's say we want our train to go from Station 1 to Station 2, wait for 10 seconds, and then go back and be a continuous loop. We're gonna right click with our train schedule, click the plus sign. We have a couple different options. We could travel to a station, we could update the schedule title, we could change the throttle, everything like that. For us, we just wanna travel to the station. Now, when you click on this, you'll actually see all of the stations that have been created for uh, basically this world. Now, for us, we know that the very first station is just called YouTube, YouTube Station. So we'll click the checkbox. It's now going to say that once it gets to the station, how long do you want it to wait? So we'll go ahead and just say, let's wait for 10 seconds. And we can do that by clicking on that. You also have a ton of different other options that you can use. You can base this off of a delay, which is what we're doing now, the time of the day, so maybe this train is only operational in the morning, the fluid cargo condition, the item cargo condition, redstone links, players seated, cargo inactivity, chunk unloaded, and station powered. There's a ton of different options that you can do in here. I think probably the coolest thing is you could do player seated, so it could be, hey, we need three people on the train that are seated before we're actually going to take off. That's pretty cool. But for us, we just want to set it at 10 seconds. So once it gets to the YouTube station, which is our first station we created, we want it to go to the second station. So we're going to say travel to the next station, and this one is called YouTube Station 2. One cool thing is since we selected the track that has YouTube Station on it, it's already recognized that in order for it to go anywhere else, the only other train station that's available is YouTube Station 2. It can't go to all those other stations, so it kind of makes it a little easier for us. So we'll say it's going to wait 10 seconds, then it's going to or go to YouTube Station 2, and then let's send this to also 10 seconds. So that is basically it. That will make it so it's going to go inside of a loop for us. One cool thing we can do is in the bottom left, it's already highlighted for us, but we can loop forever. So it's going to continuously just go around in a circle. But if we wanted this to just go one time, we could go ahead and check this off. Once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and click on the check mark. And we just got to go ahead and pass this over to our blaze. So we're going to see it's first going to go right to the very first station, just like so. It's going to slow down. It's going to stop. And then it's going to wait exactly 10 seconds. And then it's going to continue on to the next station. There you go. You're going to see it's going to start to move. It's going to head right over to the next station and it's going to slow down and stop for us. So there you go. We've made a basic train that allows us to basically transport things around the map. Some other cool things to kind of keep in mind is there's a bunch of different things we can add to our train to add other uses. One thing is that we can actually add in a chest. We could put uh, logs or some burnable fuel and that also counts as barrels. Basically that will be depleted as the train is driving and allow it to drive faster. It's also worth noting that that whole entire depleting option with things that are burnable and things like that will only be taken out of chests and barrels. If you have a vault or an item vault on your train, it will not have its items taken out at all. You can also add a steam whistle to your train if you want. You're just going to need some type of fluid tank that has steam inside of it. If you don't know what steam power is, definitely check out that video I mentioned earlier. I go over how to get steam and stuff like that and you would activate it with the sprint key. So by default, left control. It's also worth noting, you can add a seat for yourself on the train that you'd be able to right click and actually sit on your train. And as well as if you want to get an easier way to get your mobs inside of a seat. So if you didn't want to use a blaze, but let's say you want to use this parrot, you can right click with a lead and then right click on the seat and the parrot will immediately be placed right inside of the seat to be your conductor now. The next key thing to go over is the train observer. This is a little bit of a redstone thing that we have going on here. This allows us to basically detect what is on a train and then shoot a redstone signal based off of what is on that train. So as you can see, we have three different train observers. The first one's detecting for lava, second one's detecting for water, and the third one's detecting for anything. So you can see right here, we have a train coming through with lava and you're gonna see this one lit up, this one does not, and this one does light up. 
And we're about to see it again with the water container, as you can see with all three. The lava one does not light up, the water one lights up, and the anything lights up. So from there, we can actually detect what resources are on our train and maybe go ahead and change the train tracks or whatever we would like to do to kind of transport our items into different areas. So the last block that we're going to move into is the train signal. Now, this is going to get a little complicated. So once again, feel free to ask some comments. Feel free to hop in the Discord because this can go over your head a little bit. And I definitely struggled at understanding this at first. So our train signal, think of it as like a stoplight or a traffic light for cars. It allows our trains to stop and go and allow them to basically prevent collisions. We can also go ahead and when we place these on the track, it places the arrows just like how our train stations place. So if we place two of them, we can actually say, hey, trains can both go forward and backward on this track right here. The only thing we would have to keep in mind is that we would want train controls on either side for that to be an option. But you can see here, because we're able to go forward and backwards, we have two different signal lights, one red and one white, based off of what direction is currently happening. It's also, again, worth noting, you can attach Dixie tubes to a train signal to give it a little bit better of a color, because you can see we currently have a red dot, but a Nixie tube makes it a lot more visible as opposed to this white dot and just no dot. So if that went a little over your head, let me give more of an example. So right here, we can go ahead and use these train signals as a way to make it so we can cross our tracks without running our trains into each other. So what would happen here is that we have one train that wants to cross to this section. We have another train that wants to cross to this section. And you can see that as indicated by these two arrows uh, or these four arrows that are both pointing in these two separate directions. If we hold out a train signal right now, we can actually see that there have been these colored lines that have been created. So what this means is that there's this intersection right here, and this is all set to green. So what this is saying is, hey, there is actually no train car inside of this green X that we have going on here. So that means that the next train car to go ahead and enter into the section, so it'll probably be this one as soon as it gets to this block, it will allow this train to pass through. Now, while this train is actually passing through, it will actually stop this train on this block and wait until this train is fully passed through before it lets the next one in. So it's basically just like a red and green light as a traffic light, but for trains. Once again, highly recommend using train signals and Nixie tubes just as a little bit more of a decoration, but also the Nixie tubes allow it to be a lot more visible if you're trying to debug what's going on here. So things could get even more complicated because if you take a train signal, and as you can see, this is what it currently looks like, and if you right click it, it turns to brass. Now this adds a special little ability to it where you can see that right in the center, we now have this large metal plate. So what this means here is that if we have two train cars that are gonna go ahead and intersect, it will first, of course, go ahead and stop them to let one through or the other through, but it will also detect on if these train cars can fit to the other side. So let me break that down a little bit more. If these two train cars can pass through, and they are both gonna get to this other side and they're both gonna fit on this train track, which of course they would not be able to, then it will gladly let these two guys through and then it will let this third one through. Because this isn't the case, it would let this first carriage, so just this one, not this one, through to the other side of the train tracks, it would pause and then let this one go through until this one is no longer backed up on the train track and then it would let this one through. So it doesn't block any traffic that's going on and doesn't cause any collisions. I know that was probably a little bit to kind of go over your head. I highly recommend if you just hold W on this train signal, they go over that exact process all throughout this entire diagram. Took a couple watches, a lot of testing and stuff like that. But if you have a lot of train collisions, train signals. That's how it's going to save you. My last tip is that you can use a wrench to actually move trains. Super helpful because once you've built these uh, very large trains, you don't want to have to take them entirely apart. All you do is right click. It's going to say click a track to relocate the train and then you can place it down. There are limitations though. So if I right click this train, I can't run all the way, all the way, all the way over to here. It would say it cannot relocate that train this far away. However, I could like relocate it to here and then relocate it over here and so on and so on. But you can't just like send it across the whole map. Also, if you want to take apart your train and redesign it, once it's at a train station, just simply say disassemble train and that will turn it back into block form and you can go ahead and modify the train. And with that, I'm going to leave us all here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that this has probably been a lot. Uh, I've basically spent uh, the last six hours just diving deep into trains and testing things and testing things. And I'm sure that a lot of people are going to have really creative ideas. I've already seen ideas about building the Polar Express and the Hogwarts train. So uh, I'm really interested to see what comes from this update. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments. Feel free to check out my full breakdown of this update that's just popped up on the screen. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.